hello. Okay, next tutorial. Today's makeup is absolutely absurd and I'm just having the most fun time with it. <laughs> it's so silly. It's meant to be my take on Harry from Home Alone, specifically when he gets his head, you know, torched and then covered in feathers. And of course his hand. <laughs> It's less a character recreation and more about how to recreate the effects, which I had a lot of fun doing. Much like I did with my Marv makeup, which was so much fun to do as well with the whole eye into the face. I'll pop that link on the screen up there if you wanted to see that one as well. But yeah, so this is just a super, super simple and silly makeup and it's really fun to do. And if you wanted to learn how to do this makeup for yourself, stay tuned. Okie dokie, so the first step for this makeup is going to be to pop on a plain latex ball cap. So as always, I'll pop a link on the screen up there that will take you to a video that I did in the Ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> I really needed to say that, sorry. But yeah, that link will take you to a video that I did in the past to teach you how to pop on a ball cap, just to save a little bit of time in this video. The only difference is gonna be you don't really have to blend the entire ball cap, you just really need to blend the edges because the hat is going to cover the top half. So I'm gonna go pop on my ball cap and we'll go from there. So there we go, nice and bald. So it is worth noting that you could do this effect another way. You could just take a rectangle of latex, stick that down to the front of your forehead and then pin it back with some hair grips. That way you could have the extra effect of having some hair on the sides. The only downside of that is it won't be as tall to say sticking the sides down so it might ruin the illusion just a little bit. That's why I stuck mine down completely. Also when I pop on the hat, it's gonna cover most of this anyway so it shouldn't matter too much. It would be pretty cool though if you had quite long hair. So then on to the next step step, the hat. So I got this plain black hat off of eBay for a couple of quid. It's nothing particularly special. I didn't really want it to be because obviously I'm going to be cutting it in half. But the plan is to fold the ends under so we've got a nice ridge. Then we can take some scissors and cut from one side to the other about a quarter of the way down. It's better to cut less off and cut more off if you need to afterwards. So I'm just going to do that now. So when you're done, it'll look something like this. So then I'm just gonna take my scissors again and I'm gonna cut around the edge just to make it a little bit more jagged and less smooth and uniform. And when you've done that, it'll look something like this. So literally rough around the edges. So then I'm just gonna pop that on my head just cause we need to know a rough area of where we're going to paint. And then when that's on, I can take a makeup pencil. It doesn't really matter which pencil you use as long as it leaves a mark. I'm using a Corolla face liner in black. And I'm just going to peel down the hat, do a little mark roughly about one to two centimeters before the hat stops, just cause it's better to color more area than not enough. And I'm gonna do that another two more times. Pull the front down, just mark roughly about there. And then we know roughly the area that we wanna paint. So then we can take the hat off and blend it into our own skin tone. So to colour in my ball cap, I'm going to be using some alcohol activated colours just because they tend to look a little bit more realistic. You could of course also use some foundation or concealers, but they tend to be a little bit flat when the light reflects off them. Plus I have found in the past that particularly cream based foundations and concealers do sometimes degrade the latex, so it depends on how long you intend to wear it for. But the alcohol colours I'm going to be using are going to be from Neil Galton's Life Colour Palette, just because it has a really nice good mixture of tones in there. So for my skin tone, I'm going to need to warm up, ironically, the area first. So I'm going to be using the red from that palette first. I'm going to apply that all over my ball cap, even the areas that you might not see just in case. And then we can go in with these secondary colours, just layering them up more and more until it blends off into our skin. Just make sure you don't do any block colours, like we want it to be really random and sporadic over the head. Usually I find this takes between five and six layers. Okie dokie, so when you're done layering up your colours, it'll look something like this. It doesn't need to look perfect at this stage because remember we are popping on that hat. So I haven't spent a huge amount of time on this. Obviously you could keep going and going and make it look more and more realistic, but I think for now this should be okay. So the whole point of using alcohol activated colours is because they are translucent and I can still see my markings that I made earlier, but just because the camera isn't picking them up exactly, I'm just gonna quickly trace over them. So it was just one there, one there, and one there. So now we know the rough area that we want to work on for the burn makeup. 
So whenever I do a burn makeup, I really like there to be like a blistering skin effect. I know that's not what's in the movie, but I really like that element of gore. So I'm gonna take a sponge and some liquid latex. I'm gonna dip the sponge in the latex and apply it really sporadically all around this entire circle area here. And because we applied those layers of alcohol activated color, there'll be a nice barrier between the latex bald cap and the latex we're applying here, so that when it dries, we can start pulling at it in random areas, releasing it, and then making tiny little holes that are in the top layer of latex and not the ball cap. Okay, so now that's nice and dry, we can start picking at a random place, let's just say here, pull that up, then just rip the end off, and then we've got a nice blister. Nice and blister. You never want to use those two words in the same sentence, do you? Ha! <laughs> And the idea is to repeat that going around the circle shape where we went with the latex until we've got some nice blister shapes going all the way around. So there we go. So it's more about the texture, but I really, really, really wanted there to be an extra three dimensional element to this. And yeah, it looks very icky. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Then I can go back in with my alcohol palette, the same one from before, because there's this gorgeous, gorgeous, deep, deep red in there, which is funnily enough called burnt cherry, very appropriate. And I'm gonna apply that quite sporadically, not in one block area, all the way around over the whole area. I'm then gonna do exactly the same thing again with the lighter red shade. Then to add a tiny bit of crispiness and a little bit more depth, I'm gonna go in with a black alcohol activated color. This one is from the Skin Illustrator Effects palette, but it isn't necessary to be honest, you could use a black watercolor. I just have one to hand. And I'm gonna apply that really loosely to a few of the, let's just call them craters, because I feel a bit sick calling them blisters now. <laughs> but just a few of them, not all of them, just to add a tiny bit of charring. So then, before we do anything else, I'm gonna pop on my hat. And when you've done that, it should look something like this. So then, I really wanna add a shine to this just to make it look like it's been really freshly burnt. So there is a number of ways you could do this. You could use glycerin or hairspray or something like that, but I want there to be an extra level to this, so I'm gonna be using some fake blood. More specifically, I'm gonna be using Fleet Street's dark blood, but I'm not gonna use too much of it, and I'm gonna apply it with quite a large fluffy brush, just really, really lightly all over. Okay, so not too much blood, just enough that there's a nice shine. So the next step is completely optional, but whenever I do this kind of trauma makeup, I like to do like bruising under the eyes just to really tie the whole face in. I know that's different from what the character has in the movie, but this whole makeup is more about the effect rather than the character recreation. So if you wanted to do this step and make the face look a little bit more tired and bruised, basically, because you've probably gone through an ordeal having this done to you, haven't you? <laughs> I'm gonna take a Kroll and Bruise Wheel and use three colors from this. And these colors are all really nice creams. And I'm gonna start by taking the dark purple cream from that wheel and I'm gonna apply that over my eyelids and then underneath my eyes and blend that color away, making sure that when I go down underneath my eyes here, there's a nice clean line just because it makes it look like the eye bags are really prominent. Then when that's really roughly blended out, I'm gonna take the red cream from this palette and I'm gonna apply that to the corners of my eyes and underneath my eyes and then blend that color away. Then finally, I'm gonna take the off yellow from the bruise wheel and apply that just to my brow bone and then blend that away. So there we are, it just makes the whole look a lot more sinister. So the next and final step, which is again completely optional, is to do the hand makeup. And by that I mean the famous McAllister burn mark when he goes to reach for the doorknob and it sears onto his hand. So I'm gonna start by taking the same alcohol palette that I used for the top of the head and I'm gonna take that gorgeous bright red and apply that really lightly to the palm of my hand and then let that dry. So next, to create that perfect circle in the middle of the hand, I'm gonna use a face paint lid that's roughly the same size as my palm. I'm then gonna take the same burnt cherry red color from my alcohol palette and really liberally coat the edges of the upside down lid. 
Then, before the colour dries, I'm going to take that lid and press it colour side down onto my hand. It's then just a case of neatening up the circle with more of that burnt cherry red colour. Then next, I'm going to take a really sharp angle brush and paint the famous McAllister M with the same burnt cherry colour from before in the middle of the circle. Finally, just to seal everything off, I'm going to take some more of that lighter red alcohol colour from before and I'm going to lightly dab it over everything with a large fluffy brush. And there we go! Yee. It's a really, really crude, simple effect, but I think it really adds to the look. Plus, because we use alcohol activated colours to do this, it's not going to transfer, so you could wear it out all night if you're going to a party or something like that, and it isn't going to transfer. So now you could say the makeup's complete, although there is one more optional step, and that is to apply some white feathers. It's all just to add an extra element of fun, and I think this is going to be very, very funny. I just really love that scene in the movie. It's so bizarre because all the other traps in that movie are all quite dangerous. But then there's this one silly little inoffensive trap where he just gets a load of feathers blown at him and it's just really funny. So to recreate that on a smaller scale, I'm going to take one of my feathers, cut it in half and then apply a tiny bit of spirit gum to the back and then stick a few to my hat. I can then stick a few to my costume when I apply that. So there we go, feathery. I don't know what it is, but every time I do a makeup like this that's so silly, I have so much fun doing it. I mean, look at it. <laughs> Anywho, so then, all that's left for me to do is to pop on a costume and we'll see what everything looks like. And there we go. That's my look. Officially complete. So to finish off the look, I popped on a coat and a scarf and of course some more feathers just to tie everything in. I know it's not exactly screen accurate, but this is more about technique and having fun with this one. And honestly, I think it's so much fun. It's really silly, I love it. I always have so much fun when I do makeups like this. Sometimes it's just about having fun. So yeah, that's my makeup tutorial. I really hope you all enjoyed this look. I know it's super simple, but it's really fun. And it's such a great Christmas movie. It's just, I really wanted to do this makeup. And now I can say I've got a Harry and a Marv makeup. Speaking of which, if you didn't see my Marv makeup and you wanted to learn how to recreate that whole eye into the face technique, I'll pop that link on the screen up there. That was a really fun makeup to do as well. It really was. <laughs> But yeah, so that's my makeup tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, so until next time. Bye Fluffies!